What's up guys, Jay here from Tap and Turn Gaming coming at you with an EDH deck tech. Yes, I know. Uh, it's been quite some time since we've done like a paper deck tech, uh, but we're coming at you with one today. So uh, this is for a deck that I just recently completed building. Uh, and as you can see, it is for Ishkana Graph Widow. So uh, I just have... Um, we pulled one of these in our booster box. Uh, you guys might have seen it uh, if you watched our booster box opening. Uh, I picked up this nice foil uh, pre-release uh, copy at the Battlegrounds uh, last night when I was there with Derek, just kind of hanging around playing cards with people. But um, basically, what Ishkana is is a five-cost, three-five legendary uh, spider. So it's the very first legendary spider uh, in Magic's history. So that's pretty cool, and it's kind of what drew me to it. Uh, you know, as a lot of you probably know, I'm uh, you know in love with building tribal decks. So uh, this is a tribal spider deck. But uh, what she does is she's a three-five with reach. And she has Delirium, so when she enters the battlefield, if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, put three 1-2 green spider creature tokens with Reach onto the battlefield. So that's pretty cool, as long as you have Delirium, she brings three 1-2 spiders. And also, she has the ability to pay six and a black, target opponent loses one life for each spider you control. Uh, so that technically does make her a Golgari colored general. So this is a black-green deck. Uh, it is Tribal Spiders. But uh, what this deck wants to do is uh, it obviously wants to get Delirium so that when you cast Ishkana, you get those baby spiders along with her. Uh, so you'll see things like a lot of uh, instant speed spot removal. Uh, we do have you know, quite a bit of ramp in the deck via sorceries uh, to fulfill another card type. Uh, we have some enchantments uh, and a couple of artifacts in the deck that will uh, remove certain types of permanents off the board. So I kind of wanted to go with like permanent based uh, removal rather than um, just all instant and sorcery removal so that I can be able to hit that delirium easier to uh, get those baby spiders when she comes in. And you know that last ability where you can just uh, sink your mana into it to drain an opponent for however many spiders you have on the board is just really cool. So, uh, But yeah, that's uh, that's Ishkana. That's what she does. So first up, we'll take a look at the land base for this deck. So first up, we have a Hissing Quagmire. We have a Golgari Guildgate, Overgrown Tomb, Woodland Cemetery, Temple of Malady, uh, Jungle Hollow, Land of War Wastes, Golgari Rot Farm. So, you know, your your basic black-green dual lands. You know, obviously I could have something like a, like a Bayou or whatever, but, you know, that costs a bit of money. So, uh, <laughs> this is kind of, you know, more of like a casual style, just fun deck. I didn't want to dump too much funds into it. Uh, next up are like my tech land. So we have uh, Terramorphic Expanse to uh, filter for those basics. Uh, Blighted Woodland. Uh, we'll tap for one or you can pay four tap it and sack it to search for two basic lands and put them under the board tapped. Uh, Swarm Yard is really nice because it taps to let me regenerate a spider. Uh, it also lets you regenerate insects, rats, and squirrels, but this is a tribal spider deck and spiders are one of the creature types on there, so that was kind of an auto-include. Grim Backwoods lets us draw cards. Evolving Wilds is basically Terramorphic Expanse with a different name, and Bajuka Bog lets us uh, hate on somebody's graveyard. And then basically the rest of the deck, uh, I'm sorry, the rest of the lands is just basics. I think we run 12 of each, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 forests. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 swamps. So, you know, nothing too crazy in the land base. Just a two color deck so you don't need anything too kooky and crazy to get the job done. Uh, next up we'll take a look at my artifacts and enchantments that I run. Uh, first up will be the artifacts. 
So we have a Golgari Clue Stone for a Mana Rock to get that ramp, and I can uh, sack it away to draw a card if I no longer need it. Uh, Riptide Replicator is pretty cool. Uh, when it comes in, choose a color and a creature type. And then basically you can spit out um, uh, creature tokens of the chosen color and creature type. Uh, so let's say you dump you know four into that X cost. This will come in with four charge counters, and then you can pay four and tap it and put an XX creature token of the chosen color and type into play where X is the number of charge counters are on this. So obviously I'll probably be choosing spiders. Uh, color probably wouldn't really matter much, but you know most spiders are green, so you would probably choose green. But you can choose black if you want. <laughs> Uh, Executioner's Capsule, uh, permanent based uh, creature kill, so you know it allows me to hit Delirium easier. Um, so yeah, I mean that's basically a Doom Blade on a, uh, on a permanent. Uh, Darksteel Ingot, another Mana Rock. Soul Ring, another Mana Rock. Golgari Signet, another Mana Rock. <clears throat> then we have Carnage Altar, uh, lets us sack guys to draw cards, so drawing cards is always nice. Uh, being able to sack guys will let us fuel that delirium on Ishkana. Uh, Nim Death Mantle is pretty bonkers with Ishkana, so um, Derek and I talk about this card a lot, how we think it's very underrated. Um, I play it in almost every deck now. Uh, if you have that four mana laying around, uh, when a creature dies you can use it to bring that creature right back to the board uh, and immediately attach this to it. So if you have uh, like this and like an uh, like an Ashnod's altar or some sort of sacrifice outlet. Uh, when you cast Ishkana or she comes in, she uh, will bring those three spiders. If you're deliriumed, you could uh, toss one of those spiders away and her to like an Ashnod's altar to get that four colorless mana. Then use that mana to resurrect her from the graveyard and then bring more spiders and just keep doing it and basically generate infinite spider tokens. So, uh, pretty nice combo piece there. Cloudstone Curio, uh, basically I have this in here so that when I have Ishkana on the board, if I cast another, uh, another creature, I can bounce her to my hand and then recast her, and then hopefully have Delirium and get more spider tokens. Uh, here are the enchantments. We have Vampiric Rites, uh, another sack outlet that lets us draw cards and gain some life. Uh, Vile Requiem more uh, permanent based removal so on our upkeep we can put a verse counter on this then pay one in a black sacrifice it and destroy up to x target non-black creatures or x is a number of verse counters on it oversold cemetery for some creature recursion uh, same here with palace siege if we choose uh, cons which we will probably be doing most of the time uh, aestheticism gives all our guys hex proof and we can regenerate a guy for one in a green so that's always nice uh, Dictate of Erebos, Grave Pact with Flash. Uh, Perilous Forays, another sack outlet that lets us uh, ramp our mana. Dead Bridge Chant uh, is pretty cool. Uh, definitely will uh, let us hit Delirium if we're not already. Well, more than likely anyway, because when it comes in, we mill our top 10. At the beginning of our upkeep, we choose a card at random in our graveyard. If it's a creature, it goes right onto the board. If it's not a creature, it goes into our hand. So at the very best, we're getting a creature on the board for free. At the very worst, we're getting a card back to our hand. Uh, Seal of Doom, some more uh, permanent-based removal. Assault Formation. Uh, this is basically in here because most uh, spider creatures in Magic have higher defense than power. So this will let us... Um, well, it'll let our spiders hit a lot harder uh, in combat, basically. So each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So, for example, Ishkan is a 3-5, so instead of dealing 3 damage in combat, she would deal 5. And then lastly, Seal of Primordium, more permanent base removal. This will remove an artifact or enchantment. Alright, so those are my artifacts and enchantments. Uh, next we'll look at the one Planeswalker that I run, which is Vraska the Unseen. Um, she's pretty cool. I like her mainly for the minus three to uh, destroy target non-land permanent. Uh, the plus one is not bad. It kind of protects her, or at least deters your, uh, your opponents from maybe wanting to attack her, because anything that deals damage to her when you activate that just automatically dies. Uh, the minus seven, I generally probably won't 
touch because it's kind of douchey to have three tokens on the board that if they hit you, you just automatically lose the game. But maybe the game gets really long and drawn out and I just want it to be over, so I have that option. Uh, next we'll look at my instants and sorceries. Uh, first up are the instants, mainly uh, spot removal here. Uh, but there are some other cards. Uh, Hero's Downfall because it kills a creature or planeswalker. Malicious Affliction will destroy a target non-black creature and then when we cast it, if a creature died this turn, we may copy this so we can essentially uh, kill two non-black creatures for two mana if uh, Morbid has been kicked off. Rend Flesh, destroy target non-spirit creature. Uh, this was actually originally Victim of Night, which lets you destroy a non-vampire, werewolf, or zombie. I felt like this was just a better fit. Uh, it does cost one more mana to cast, but uh, it only has one uh, creature clause on it, a spirit. And uh, spirits aren't, you know, heavily... I mean, you do see some spirits here and there, but uh, I wouldn't say that they're, you know, very common. Uh, Wretched Confluence is pretty nice. Let's us choose three of these modes, and we can choose the same mode more than once. Uh, target player draws a card and loses a life, or target creature gets neg two, neg two, or return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So it just gives us lots of options. Uh, Putrefy kills a creature or an artifact. Murder just straight up kills any creature, no color restrictions or anything. Uh, beast Within destroys any permanent, and then that permanence controller gets a 3-3 three, three green beast, which is completely fine with me. Uh, Rachnogenesis just had to go into the deck because it's a uh, tribal spider deck. Uh, for 3, you get um, X 1-2 green spider creature tokens with reach onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures attacking you. Prevent all combat damage, though it would be dealt this turn by non-spider creatures. So not only is it a fog, uh, granted that you're not getting attacked by any spiders, but it uh, puts a boatload of spiders onto the board for you, potentially. Uh, Doomblade, nice foil Doomblade, by the way, uh, kills a non-black creature. Go for the throat, kills a non-artifact creature. Explosive Vegetation lets us uh, search for two basics, put them onto the board tapped, and then shuffle. Uh, this is my uh, my ramp package here, by the way. We're into the sorceries now. So Nissa's Pilgrimage, Cultivate, Kadama's Reach, Far Wanderings. So, uh, you know, some decent amount of ramp there. Then we have my two sweepers. We have In Garrick's Wake and Life's Finale. Kills all creatures and planeswalkers we don't control. Uh, destroys all creatures, and then we can search someone's library for three creatures and dump them in their graveyard. Uh, then we have Ruinous Path, basically Hero's Downfall just at sorcery speed, but it also has that Awaken if you want to awaken one of your lands into a guy. And Spider Spawning, because it's a tribal spider deck. Uh, we get one, I'm sorry, we get a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach onto the board for each creature card in our graveyard. And we can flash it back for six and a black. So those are my instants and sorceries. Finally, we will take a look at my spiders because it's a tribal spider deck. Uh, there aren't really too many phenomenal spiders, so uh, you might see like a lot of uh, like vanilla spiders in the deck, which you know might seem like kind of a waste. But you know, like I said, it's just a fun little casual tribal deck that uh, I felt like could be pretty cool to play. So. Uh, first up we have Ribcage Spider, a 1-4 with reach. Uh, Root Spider is a 2-2, and if it's assigned as a blocker, it gets first strike and plus one plus oh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Wooly Spider, a 2-3 that can, uh, well, 2-3 with reach, and if it uh, blocks a creature with flying, it gets plus oh, plus two. Uh, Watcher in the web is a 2-5 with reach that can block an additional seven creatures each combat, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Stinger Fling Spider is a 2-5 with reach when he comes in, destroy target creature worth flying. Somber Walled Spider, a 2-4 with reach, uh, and if you have Morbid, uh, he comes in with two plus one plus one counters. Uh, Silk Lash Spider. A 2-7 with reach, where you can pay 2 green and X, and he deals X damage to each creature with flying. Sentinel Spider is just a 4-4 with vigilance and reach. Acid Web Spider is a 3-5 with reach, and it destroys a equipment when it comes into play. 
Uh, Swift Spinner is a 2-3 with Flash and Reach. Kessig Recluse is a 2-3 with Reach and Death Touch. Penumbra Spider, a 2-4 with Reach. And when it dies, you put a 2-4 uh, Black Spider Creature token with Reach onto the board. Uh, Grave Robber Spider is a 2-4 with Reach, where you can pay 3 and a black, and he gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Uh, you can only activate that once each turn. Uh, Blight Widow is a 2-4 with Reach and Infect. Spore Cap Spider is a 1-5 with Reach. Uh, Orin Reef Recluse is a 1-3 uh, with Reach when it comes in. Uh, if you paid the kicker cost, which is two and a green, you can destroy a target creature with flying. Uh, Netcaster Spider is a 2-3 with reach. When it blocks a creature with flying, it gets plus two, plus O. Oh. Hitchclaw Recluse is a 1-4 with reach. Frostweb Spider is a 1-3 with reach. When it blocks a creature with flying, put a plus one, plus one counter on it at the end of the combat phase. Uh, Deadly Recluse is a 1-2 with Reach and Death Touch. And finally, Jungle Weaver is a 5-6 with Reach and Cycling for 2. Uh, he's basically just there for some extra card draw. Uh, you know, he's one of the... Uh, actually, I think he is the most expensive spider in the deck at 7 mana. So I'll probably just use him to cycle to draw a card. But yeah, I mean, that about wraps up the deck tech, guys. So, uh, you know, nothing too crazy. Uh, it's just, you know, like I said, a fun little deck that I whipped up. Because um, once I saw Ishkana, I was like, yep, Tribal Spiders has to happen. Uh, so, I mean, the overall, uh, you know, idea that I had for this deck was, um, you know, just kind of amass a bunch of spiders on the board. Use that permanent-based and instant and sorcery-based uh, removal to be able to hit Delirium when I cast Ishkana, and then, you know, use all of that removal, obviously, to just stave off all of my opponent's creatures, hopefully, uh, and then just amass a wall of spiders and just drain people out with Ishkana's ability. So, you know, that was overall my idea for the deck. But, uh, yeah, that about wraps it up. So let me know what you think of my deck, guys, in the comment section below. Leave me some comments uh, if there are any suggestions of cards that you think I should add in uh, to the deck. You know, I'm always open to suggestions. I love hearing your, your comments and stuff like that. Uh, thumbs up this video if you did enjoy it so that we uh, know to keep making paper deck techs for you guys in the future. I know a lot of you have voiced... Um, your opinions and say that you kind of missed the uh, the paper deck tech so hopefully we'll be doing some more of those in the near future uh, and also when you thumbs up the video it makes it easier for other people to find our videos and if you're not already subscribed to our channel tap and turn gaming please crush that subscribe button we really do appreciate it but again this has been Jay with tap and turn gaming again hope everybody enjoyed the video and we'll catch you later thanks a lot for watching